Hey friends, Sheila here, and today I am grumpy. If you follow me on Instagram or watch some of my recent videos, you may know that I was recently on a bike tour in Switzerland, France, and Spain. Videos from that trip will be out in the coming weeks. But I haven't been up for editing or for much else really because I am experiencing what I think is best described as the post bike tour blues. This is when you go out on a big, exciting, grand, wonderful, beautiful adventure on your bicycle and you come home and you just feel blue. And I know I'm not alone in this because I was actually talking to Agnieszka from Wheels on a Bike about it recently. So I thought today we could commiserate about the experience and challenges of coming home from a bike trip. And I'm also gonna share six tips that have helped me in the past when it comes to the post bike tour blues and that are helping me now as well. Tip number one is to just let yourself grieve. I feel like when I come back from a bike tour, I feel all kinds of emotions. I might feel sad, I might feel disappointed, I might feel just kind of out of sorts, but I also recognize how privileged I am to go on a bike tour, how privileged I am to have a home to come back to when I'm done a bike tour, and so I can kind of end up, you know, beating myself up a little because I'm like, you're so lucky, you shouldn't feel sad. But of course that isn't how emotions work. So I try to let both exist simultaneously to recognize that yes, I am incredibly lucky. And also it's kind of hard to come back from this big, beautiful adventure and to have had all these beautiful experiences and suddenly they feel so far away and you're back in your usual environment and that can feel really unsettling. And it's okay to just take a little time to grieve, to be sad or whatever you're feeling and to just let those emotions be, to not judge them, to just let them be as they are. Tip number two is to take it so I try when possible to schedule a bit of buffer time between my trip and when I need to head back to work and head back into regular activities. This isn't always possible, but if I can, I leave myself a few days. I also try to basically do the bare minimum. <laughs> I try to only put things on my to-do list that I really truly have to get done so that it doesn't feel too daunting. And the things that can get done a little later, well, they're just gonna get done a little later. Number three is to find the little joys of being home, like having coffee in your favorite mug. Because here's the thing, as amazing as bike touring is, and it is amazing, there are some comforts of home that you can't get on the road. So for me, that's hanging out with my pets, seeing my family and friends, going to my favorite coffee shop, going to my local climbing gym, putting on different clothes than the two rotational outfits I've been wearing for weeks. As much as I love being on the road, there is a lot about being home to be grateful for. So I try to celebrate and appreciate those things while I'm here. Number four is to honor your trip. You know, you had this big, beautiful experience. You want to remember it and treasure it. So for me, the way I do that is by making videos, by turning all of those memories and experiences into a video that I share. And yes, those videos will be coming once I'm done with the taking it easy stage of the experience. But this can be done in so many different ways. You can make a scrapbook or print out photos, or if you bought any souvenirs, put those around your space. Or if there was a practice that you really loved from wherever you were, maybe you can introduce that into your life. When Michael and I were in Turkey last year, we ate so much halva and we absolutely loved it. So when we got home, 
who made some halva. And finding opportunities to talk about your experience, whether that is in a blog post or Instagram or a video or with your friends and family. I know for me, I get kind of shy when people ask about my trips. You know, they'll say, how was your trip? And I'll be like, I, it was good. And how are you? And I kind of like brush past it, but there's no need to. If people are asking, it's because they're curious and it's great to have a conversation about it. It's a real thing that happened. It doesn't have to just exist in your memory, in your brain. You can share it with others and help it feel even more real and important. Number five, and this is only once I have, you know, grieved and taken it easy and celebrated my trip, then I start to find purpose again in being home. I find when I'm on a bike tour, my purpose is so clear. You know, when you're traveling by bicycle, everything feels a little simpler. You know, you need food, you need shelter, you need to get from point A to point B, and that's about it. And focusing on those basic needs is just so beautiful and simple. And when you get home, you can be inundated with bills and emails and all of these kind of little things that can be stressful and just don't necessarily feel as deeply connected to your purpose. And so when I'm ready, I start finding my purpose in being home. And for me, that's connecting with friends and family you know, the people I love that I don't get to see in person when I'm on the road. It's going climbing regularly because that helps me feel connected to my body and my strength. And it's finding purpose in my work as well. You know, one of my jobs is working in a bike shop and so I get to go in and educate and share information and help other people with their own cycling and bicycle adventures. And working helps me fund future bicycle adventures. So yeah, finding that purpose again when I'm ready is always an important step. And step number six is to plan your next adventure. Because that's the cool thing about going on a bike trip. Every time you go, you learn more about yourself and what you want from your next trip. Do you want something more challenging, less challenging, more remote, less remote, more pavement, less pavement, hotter, colder, or maybe more of the same? There's so many options. There's so many ways to bike tour. And every time you go, you get to learn more about what you want moving forward. And just because one bike trip is over, that doesn't mean your journey is over. It's just time to plan the next one. All right. That's it for today's video. I am starting to approach feeling ready to get back to editing. So I have a feeling my videos about Switzerland and France and Spain will be out before too long. If you wanna make sure you don't miss those videos, be sure to hit subscribe and the little bell. And if you want to support my videos and get the behind the scenes scoop, you can join me over on Patreon. Thank you for being here. An extra big thanks to all my patrons and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.